This is going to be an introduction to IPv6. Nothing big, just the basics about IP version 6. You're not going to have to get too in depth with this within the CCNA. We are going to talk about what is new with IP version 6, the types of IP version 6 addresses, how do we route with it, and just a basic configuration of IPv6 and some commands that go along with it. Again, we're going to keep this light. For the CCNA, IPv6 is not a big part of it. You're just going to have to know that it's out there and the basics of the addressing. So let's talk about what is new with IPv6, meaning in comparison to IP version 4 that we're using now. Now, a big difference with IP version 6, it's longer. 128 bits versus 32 bits. So it's a lot more address space. It's got a different format that we're going to go in and look at. It looks different. Stateless auto configuration, which we'll talk about. Mandatory IP sec for all IP version 6 devices, so it's more secure. And it's got enhanced multicast and mobility support. So let's go in and take a look at the different types of IPv6 addresses, the format, and some samples. Now there's quite a few different types of IPv6 addresses all with different purposes. The first one is the unicast. It's globally unique and can be routed anywhere. Meaning it's not going to overlap. Link local. That's for interlink communication. It's got to be unique to the link and it's a non-routable address. Unique local addresses, they're globally unique, and this is the closest thing to an IPv4 private address. We've got an AnyCast address. This address allows representation of a service and not a device. This allows clients to find the nearest provider of a needed service, so very cool. Multicast, this is an address that represents a group of devices. So streaming applications, things like that. So there's some similarities there to IPv4, IPv4, <laughs> but there are also a couple differences in there used in an environment, you know, more global. Like the link local is different, unique local addressing, a little bit different um, than IPv4. Now let's talk a little bit more about this converge, uh, configuration of IPv6 addresses and what this statically stateless auto configuration means. Now for stateless auto configuration we have stateful or stateless. Stateful would be using DHCP v6. That's stateful. Stateless auto configuration uses part of our MAC address and a little bit of stuffing. They take the MAC address, let's say this is our MAC address, 005367CA5E72 and they add FFFE to the middle which would give us 005367FF FECA5E72 so that's the new part of it and then there's a marker that goes in it the seventh bit is marked with a 1 or a 0. 1 means globally unique, 0 would mean locally unique. If it was globally unique, the seventh bit here would be turned on and this 0 right here would not be 0, it would be a number 2. The network portion is pulled from the router. So it makes it real easy and saves time on configuration of our devices. So what would happen is if we had our router and off of the subnet we had a client machine, the host sends a message out requesting the rest of the address and the router sends the rest back specifying what network the host is on and then he adds his MAC address and the marker and everything is good. So stateless auto configuration, stateful would be using DHCP version 6. Now I want to take a look at some sample addresses for IPv6 here. If we want to represent this, there's different ways that we can represent these. Blocks of zeros can be represented 
with one zero. So we can represent that with one zero. If we want to, like in this situation with leading zeros in a block, we can get rid of the leading zeros and just leave the one there. And same with these leading zeros here and just put the 3a. If we have consecutive blocks of zeros and we can only use this once, so it could be for one block or consecutive blocks of zeros, what we could do is we could just use the double colon. It can only be used once. So leading zeros can be removed. A double colon can be used once to replace consecutive fields of all zeros. And the 128 bit address is represented by eight fields of four hexadecimal places. Each hex is one is uh, four bits. So each hexadecimal place represents four bits. Now let's go in and talk a little bit further about this IPv6. More specifically, how do we route with it? we're going to be routing with IP version 6, a couple different ways we can do it. Just like we would with IP version 4, static routing, or we can use a protocol. Again, a protocol is a set of rules that's going to tell our device how to populate the routing tables by talking to other routers. RIPNG, ripping, OSPF version 3, EIGRP for IPv6, no IGRP. Is is or ISIS for IPv6 and MP BGP different protocols we can use with routing with IPv6 or again we can just tell the router how to get to the destination subnet now let's take a look at some considerations uh, when we're going to be routing so static routing very similar to IPv4 except there's one specific requirement when routing with IPv6, the router must be able to identify the link local addresses of each neighboring router. So again, if we have a couple of routers, they are going to have addresses that are local to that particular link, just so they can talk directly with each other, not routable addresses. RIPNG, new version of RIP for IPv6, RFC. 2080. A lot of fun reading there. <laughs> Three main changes to RIPNG. Uses IPv6 for transport, obviously. Multicast address of FF0209 to advertise every 30, sec or every 30 seconds, and updates are sent on UDP port 521. So some changes there. Important information. <clears throat> OSPF version 3. Some big differences. Again, the requirement that it runs over IPv6. Uses different multicast addresses, FF025 and FF026. So it uses different multicast addresses. Uses a link local address as the source of its advertisement. So if you're looking at your OSPF neighbors, again, link local address. And there is no authentication because IPsec, baby. So IPsec is going to be handling the authentication. And with EIGRP for IPv6, it's a protocol dependent module and there's not really a big difference with it, with the EIGRP. It operates much in the same way as it does with IPv4. So what I want to do is go over some of these reserved address ranges real quick that you might see with IPv6. And I'm just going to go in and do a sample configuration on the router of IPv6 so we can see some of the commands and see how to implement it. Again, you are not expected to be an IPv6 pro for the CCNA test. Just the basics. So there are a bunch of different special IPv6 addresses that you'll need to know. So take some notes. A bunch of zeros. That's the equivalent of all zeros in IPv4. Source address of a host when we're using stateful configuration, meaning DHCP. Loopback equivalent. All zeros and a one. A bunch of zeros, six spaces of zeros, and then 
IPv4 added on to the end. So that's the last 32 bits are IPv4. And this could be different numbers, but that's how we integrate IPv4 into an IPv6 network. We just cut out the last 32 bits and append it on to the end. 2000, globally unique address range. FC00, unique local unicast. FE80, link local unicast. Three and a bunch of Fs reserved for testing and documentation, as well as 2001. ODB8 is also reserved for testing and documentation. FF00, multicasting. And then 2002 is used when transmitting IPv6 over an IPv4 network. So we can actually tunnel IPv6 over an IPv4 network if you want to integrate them. Now, let's go in and take a look at some configuration options and things we would have to consider when implementing IPv6. And you're configuring IPv6 with an IPv4 environment, you're going to have to tunnel it. So what's going to happen is you're going to encapsulate the IPv6 packets to run over an IPv4 network. Your NICs if you want this to work, dual stack. You're going to have an IPv4 and an IPv6 address. You're going to need this, a device that can translate communication between IPv6 and IPv4 networks to get this functioning. Again, there's going to be very few full-on IPv6 networks, so there's going to be, have to be some sort of translation between those devices. Now, again, we don't have to be pros at IPv6. We just need to know the basics. So what I want to do is go through a sample configuration and the commands and what they are doing uh, with the IPv6 configuration. Here are some sample commands you might see when you're configuring IPv6. Global mode, IPv6 unicast routing, allowing the router to route IPv6 packets. You would give your interface an IPv6 address. And what this does, it says IPv6 address slash 64 is a prefix with the network ID and all that stuff. EY64 says, hey, take the MAC address and make that the last 64 bits of the address to represent this particular interface. Now, if we're going to be tunneling over an IPv4 network, we can go interface tunnel 0 and actually create a tunnel interface sourcing from interface GI 0 slash 0. The tunnel destination could be an IPv6 or IPv4 address as well as a host name. So we're saying it's coming from GI 0 0 going to this destination IP and tunnel mode IPv6 IP means we're encapsulating IPv6 addresses and sending it over an IPv4 network. Another command would be IPv6 router rip and this is enabling rip for IPv6. Palestra is the process ID to represent this particular process of rip running and enable means we're enabling it. So that's not a complete IPv6 setup in a network but it's some commands you might see and as well as what they do. I brought up my router because I've gone ahead and configured an IPv6 address on there. And what we can do is show IPv6 interface and it will show me the IPv6 addresses I have configured. Check it out, link local address. Just representing the local link, that FE80 link local. Part of the MAC address in the back here. Here's that FFFE part that gets buffered into that MAC address to make that link local address. The subnet, I said 76. I should have used the 2001, but I just said 76 for the subnet. And here's the rest of it. Remember, I put the EUI-64. It slaps that MAC address with that buffer in there onto the back end to give it the complete address. So very important information there. Now let's go in and configure this device as an IPv6 DHCP server. 
So if I want to configure my IPv6 DHCP server, IPv6 DHCP pool, and I can give it a name. But first, I better be in global mode. IPv6 DHCP pool, and I can give it a name. Let's call it Palestra. Now I can go in and configure different parameters for it. I can specify a DNS server and specify the DNS server for the DHCP to give out. I can specify a domain name. Domain name. I can go in and specify the prefix delegation. Remember, the prefix is the first part. The last part of the address is going to be that particular NIC's MAC address. And so what I can do is I can go prefix delegation pool palestra and then I've got different options I can specify with this. I can go, okay, I'm going to give it lifetime addresses. And I can specify how long I want them to keep those. Valid lifetime, expire prefix at a specific time and date, infinite valid lifetime. So I can go in and set different parameters with these lifetime commands. So again, this will tell me how long they're going to be able to keep these addresses. And then I can go to the interface and actually specify what addresses I'm going to give out. And I can also specify what prefixes I'm going to be giving out. So I can specify those and then specify certain things for the valid pool. So it's pretty cool what I can do here. Once I get this all set up, I would go into the, to the interface and specify what DHCP parameters I'm going to be giving out. So I go into interface, GI0 slash 0, IPv6, DHCP, server, and then it's going to be using the parameters from the Palestra pool. So pretty cool commands we can actually go in and run here. And that allows, remember the client is going to be using that stateless auto configuration is going to go to the server to the is going to broadcast out and the router is going to answer give him the prefix and then the client's going to slap his MAC address with that FFFE on there to get the actual IPv6 address so let's do some review we've just gone in and configured an DHCP v6 on a router interface we have talked about what is new with IPv6 different types of addresses that you'll see, anycast, multicast, link local, configuration of IPv6, configure an IPv6 address along with IPv4 like dual stacking our router interface, how we show that address. We went in and configured a DHCP server on the interface and looked at some of those commands as well as setting up a tunnel. Remember with the DHCP version 6 we tell it to operate the server on this one interface here and then the client sends out a request, an RS request for a prefix to his MAC address. The router sends back the prefix, the client slaps its MAC address on there with that FFFE crammed there in the middle and it has its actual address. And again all we need to know are some basics for the CCNA. Nothing too crazy. Just need to know what an IPv6 address looks like, some basics about RIP, OSPF, just that it's available, that you can tunnel it over IPv4. Nothing too demanding as far as IPv6 goes for the CCNA test.